Hello everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar. Uh, my name is Daniel Eversall. I am the product manager of tissue analysis software at Acquia Biosciences. Uh, it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce a collaborative effort between Acquia Biosciences and VisioPharm for the creation of a new Vis app for the automated immune infiltrate analysis and multispectrally unmixed images. We have two speakers, Dr. Ben Freiberg of VisioPharm um, who will be talking about uh, the VisioPharm environment and give an overview of the application that was developed. And then we will turn it over to David Cordova of Acquia Biosciences, who will then uh, go through uh, the benefits of multispectrally unmixing uh, your slides uh, in the inform and uh, environment. And then he will show the uh, demo of the Viz app in the VisioPharm environment. Uh, so, with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ben Freiberg. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Ben Freiberg, and I'm Vice President of Research Product for VisioPharm. Today's webinar is going to focus on a new app by VisioPharm that was specifically designed for phenotyping images from Acquia Vectra Polaris and Vectra systems. So today's agenda on my half of the webinar will be a brief introduction to who VisioPharm is and what it is we do, what our platform is and what are the benefits in terms of flexibility and diversity in installations and imaging, followed by high parameter images on the Viz platform, specifically the benefits of analysis of Acquia images in Viz, including high parameter visualization tools, basic endpoint calculations. And then I'll have some conclusions and turn the webinar over to Dave Cordover. So a little bit about VisioPharm. VisioPharm is a trusted market leader in digital pathology. We've been operational since 2002, and we have headquarters in Denmark with regional offices in the United States, Sweden, London, and also in Germany. We have over 85 employees and we deeply care about data quality, workflow, and ease of use. And this will be important in the context of phenotyping multiplexed images. We offer solutions for cell and tissue-based research and diagnostics, and we have a large footprint. And the power of the software is reflected in over 1,200 peer-reviewed publications just since 2010 alone. Oncotopics is VisioPharm's flagship software designed for the analysis of digital pathology images. Oncotopics is heavily centered around improving data quality and enhancing both accuracy and precision of data analysis and results. Oncotopics consists of a number of modules that come together to provide the most powerful platform available for digital pathology research today. The scientific principles in Oncotopics are validated in the literature in the 1,200 papers that have been published just since 2010. Oncotopics gives the experience from basic research to diagnostics. It can be used in pre-discovery, in understanding disease and basic research, discovery in validating targets and selecting lead compounds, preclinical in looking at efficacy and toxicity, and enabling clinical trials looking at safety and efficacy and PKPD. And in, where available in Europe, we can also be used for diagnostics. VisioPharm supports the Oncotopics platform by hosting an online app center. The app center has many different disciplines that can be studied and are, and are easily accessible for our customers. The apps in the App Center can be requested by customers for download to be able to utilize on their own data. Some of the different things that group apps together include disease type, biomarker, purpose, technique, tissue, and other apps. And then these can be broken down further into which discipline, be it dermatology, endocrinology, neuroscience, or oncology, and others that are available. From here, the App Center can be further explored to see the individual apps that we offer. Today's talk is going to focus on one of the newest apps in the App Center, which is an app designed by VisioPharm 
to analyze an immuno-oncology panel developed by Akoya Bioscience for a lung cancer example. Feel free to visit Visio Farm's App Center at www.visiofarm.com forward slash App Center. The author module for Oncotopics allows the user a virtually endless toolbox for designing their own algorithms for image analysis. One not need know how to code in order to do this. Everything is provided in a simple, easy to use workflow. First, beginning with pre-processing of your images. Second, training on examples. Third is the segmentation of your data into different classes, followed by post-processing and results. All apps follow the same exact workflow and can be used across many different image types. Phenotyping takes place at two points within the app authoring process. First is in the segmentation and later in the result calculation. Particularly in segmentation, phenotyping uses an object-based classifier or cell classifier to be able to generate individual cell class phenotypes for all of the cells that are annotated in the image. The output results generate tables of information that can be utilized to plot information about the data that was segmented in the image. The phenotype multiplexing module adds support for high parameter multiplexing to the Oncotopics and Biotopics platforms through its integration into the app author and plotting tools within the software platform. The phenotype module works with fluorescence data from the PE Vectra and Vectra Polaris systems that's been spectrally unmixed as shown in the example below. The phenotype multiplexing module automatically phenotypes high parameter data sets, generating a phenotypic matrix for all cell phenotypes, phenotypic profiles for patient stratification, neighborhood analysis for understanding relationships between different phenotypes of cells, and TISNI plots for further understanding of phenotypic relationships. The module automatically color codes and names labels in the Viz platform to match those generated by the auto phenotyping algorithm. Most important, this solution is easy to use for really complex data sets. The phenotype multiplexing module utilizes our normal app author as mentioned before. The user can utilize image features for cell segmentation to begin. Once an image has had cells segmented, as we can see here with the green annotation, the image is ready for phenotyping. The phenotyping interface is quite straightforward with the method of classification set to phenotype and the method for phenotype fluorescence specifically, the user can enter certain parameters for individual channels that include a value range for looking at the range of intensities within an image, as well as a quantile range, which enables the elimination of overlapping pixels and crosstalk between adjacent cells. Channels can be ignored from this process by simply checking a checkbox to ignore selected color channels. Most important, many of these parameters can be tied together with an easy multi-select option for either inclusion or exclusion from the phenotyping process. Once phenotyped, the image takes the appearance of something quite different from the cell segmentation, where here in yellow, we can actually see where the tumor is annotated. The multicolored cells are actually immunoinfiltrates based on the phenotyping. And then there's other types of cells located within the tissue that didn't meet certain selection criteria, and those are just marked gray. How we get to this through that last interface is very straightforward. With this type of data, we can go in and hone our individual channels. In this case, the amino oncology panel provided by Akoya, including PDL1, CD8, FOXP3, CD68, cytokeratin, and PD1, and 
adjust our variables to get the best segmentation of our cells possible. Once we have this segmentation of cells done in an automatic way, we can follow that up by utilizing a number of charts that are unique to multiplex data. For example, the chart on the right is a phenotypic matrix for the given image on the left. Here we can see the individual phenotypes for the cells that were generated by the algorithm. And we can see next to them the counts of those individual phenotypes. In addition, we can see the relative expression of the different biomarkers that made up the individual phenotypes along the x-axis. Other plotting tools available for the phenotyping module include a, a phenotype profile plot, which shows again on the uh, y-axis the individual phenotypes that were found for the image, and on the x-axis the individual images that were analyzed, in this case three different fields of view. In this plot we see which phenotype has the highest frequency in the phenotype profile based on its change of color from white through yellow up to green, with green representing the highest number of cells of a given phenotype found in an image. Utilizing this plot, we can easily screen across images to see if we see differences in phenotype expression across different patient samples. The phenotyping module also provides for neighborhood analysis that's quite straightforward and extremely powerful. In looking at this plot, we have our phenotypes on the left and our phenotypes on the x-axis as well. And what this plot shows us is in red where we have a strong correlation between two individual phenotypes plotted on the x and y axis, and in blue where two phenotypes actually are found away from each other more than would be expected by random sampling. So the chart not only tells us what phenotypes of cells are found close to one another, it also shows us which types of phenotypes are found specifically far away from each other. And we can compare this type of analysis across patient samples to see if, for example, responders have a different attraction of different phenotypes than non-responders. Lastly, the phenotype module allows for the plotting of TISNY charts. TISNY charts are a great way to do dimensionality reduction to be able to see different types of readouts in, in a given sample. In this example, we can see in the heat map that CD3 is located in this top portion of the chart with the two different clusters of CD3 on top and just to the right. If we look for other channels on this plot, we can see that the top cluster of CD3 are, are actually also CD4 positive, and the right-hand cluster of CD3 are the CD8 positive cells, showing that we capture all CD3 cells and can subdivide the categories of, of CD3 cells into both T helper cells and cytotoxic T cells, and we can visualize these utilizing TISNY plots. Phenomap also provides access to all output variables available within the app author tool. Here, for example, we can see CD8 to CD68 distance between individual cells and we can plot from one label phenotype to a second by object in our image and find out those statistics. The neighborhood plot only tells you which types of cells are close to one another. If you want the actual distances between types of cells, you can use specific tools within the output calculations to generate that data. In addition to distance data, there are a variety of other tools available to the user within the author dialog to be able to generate specific output variables 
needed for a given experiment. So to summarize, the benefits of the phenotyping module are that it's an able to process and analyze high parameter data in a very simple interface. It automatically identifies cell phenotypes in high parameter images using a Gaussian mixture model. It automatically assigns labels in the Oncotopics Biotopics platform related to, to the identified cell phenotypes and it utilizes already existing tools in Oncotopics and Biotopics for interrogation of phenotypic classes using conventional digital pathology methods. But given the complexity of these high parameter data sets, there's also other tools available for the analysis of these high parameter data sets, including TISNY plots for the analysis of phenotypic relationships, both related to the type of cells or phenotypes that have been found within the image and heat maps to show where we have the highest expression of different biomarkers within the TISNY plot and within which individual phenotypes the different markers are highly expressed. We're also able to generate a phenotypic matrix across any selection of images to show the relative expression contributions of the individual biomarkers. A phenotype profile plot to look at relative abundancies of phenotypes across different patients and built-in neighborhood analysis for identifying phenotypes that are near or far from each other. That's the summary of what phenotyping can do in the VIS platform uh, with images generated on Akoya instruments. Now I'll pass it to Dave, who will go further into the Akoya instruments and the images that they produce. Hello, and and thank you, Dan, for the, the introduction. My name is Dave Cordover. I'm a senior application scientist at Akoya Biosciences. And today we're going to discuss multispectral analysis using Akoya and VisiFarm technologies. So Akoya offers groundbreaking new multiplex technologies to help you identify your biomarkers. This will enable precision immunotherapy through spatial biomarker discovery. So why multiplexing, multispectral imaging for quantitative analysis? We're able to, to unmix multiple signals from autofluorescence, which gives us a reliable and accurate understanding of the biology. Spectral crosstalk is reduced, allowing us to analyze co-localized markers. Anything with collagen, for example, brain, skin, liver, autofluorescence is going to be very prevalent. So with multispectral imaging, we can isolate that autofluorescence signal. And then of course, we can truly understand the spatial metrics of tumor microenvironment and really understand those cell-to-cell -cell interactions. This panel is showing your typical DAPI, CD8, PD-L1, FOXP3, PD-1. SOX10 is our tumor marker. You can also use cytokeratin and then your CD68 macrophage. It's Right now it's not unmixed. Here is the image of the autofluorescence where we're going to isolate, isolate this and then you, we get an unmixed image you see here. Signal to noise ratio is, is very important. As you can see um, from this top image, it's murky. That's clearly not going to give you a good cell segment. So once you unmix, you know, it's going to isolate that autofluorescence and allow you to segment better and to get the best downstream phenotyping and, and give you the confidence to pick up rare phenotyping events. So I want to talk about crosstalk, you know, with four floors, um, spectral, four or more floors, spectral overlap is ine ine inevitable. So this conventional narrowband graph is showing you where the crosstalk is leaking into other wavelengths. So once you unmix, that crosstack greatly decreases. Again, just it's, it's unmixing is crucial. This this caricature, caricature uh, is, depicts a seven multiplex assay and how cells are interacting with one another, more specifically an immune infiltrating response. 
Multispectral images can allow us to see these interactions. The higher you plex, the more information you're going to get. Here is an example of the spatial analysis done on a multiplex PD PDL1 positive melanoma. So, what can spatially, spatial organization tell us? This immune oncology panel allows us to access and understand PDL1 expression along invasive margins and understand a large variable of phenotypes at play. This again shows the importance of multiplexing and multispectral imaging. This uh, phenoptics workflow starts with or staining with our opal reagents. And then you multispectrally scan using our mantra vector three or our vector polaris. Then you can bring that whole slide image into a phenochart, our viewer, and then unmix the image in within inform, which you can create a multiple uh, uh, a multiple component TIFF image, which is key to bring into the Visio Farm platform, where the Visio Farm app will be run. Now I'm going to to show you a live demonstration of our VisiFarm app and the VisiFarm platform at work. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the VisiFarm software. Okay, so this is the interface of the software. Our image has already been loaded, um, but you can see this down here is the database. Again, we loaded the component TIFF images that have been unmixed within inform first um, you can see the image is kind of is kind of dull right now so you, we can come to this color adjustment um, again all the whole panel our pdl pdl1 cd8 fox b3 cd68 our tumor marker cytokeratin pd1 our default um, default in inputted into the into this software when you load the specific image and you can see it's dull. So we're going to come to this color adjustment. We're going to go to the vast advanced function, and then we're going to brighten it up by using this. This function. So now you, we can see um, the tumor stroma, um, and and so you can see the the nuclei better and everything else. You, we can actually come here and you can actually do an individual. Um, you can do it, uh, each each band individually. I'm going to reset this function so it's back to normal. And we're going to do, let's just do the DAPI. Now, I typically do this DAPI when I am writing a cell segment. Um, you can see it enhance it. And you can set it at default, a default so when you go to another image, it'll automatically um, be at this brightness. So we're going to reset that and go back to the all bands. And we are going to enhance the brightness here so we have a nice image I'm going to set it as default this now this mode mode and bands this allows you to to click off and on the different bands right so if if for some reason you want you don't want to look at set of keratin specifically you can click that off you can set at your default again probably the best thing to do also is to set off your set click off your auto fluorescence as you can see clearly make a difference. That's that multispectral imaging that we, we talked about. It's giving us autofluorescence as a band, so it's nice to be able to click off of that. The next step is going to actually run the app. So the app is a three-step app. VisiFarm created, um, created it for us. It's, uh, the first step is the tumor stroma and then the cell segment is the second, and then the um, multiplexing phenotyping is the final step. That's where all the data is gonna come in. So I'm gonna, uh, in lieu of running it in front of you guys, because it might take a little bit of time, I've already run it, but the first step we would run is the tumor stroma, and we would get something like this. You can see um, the different uh, ROIs. Um, the green is representing the tumor, as you can see here. The, um, the blue is going to be representing everything that's in the stroma. And then there's this gray that's representing non-tissue. The next uh, process would be to do the cell segment. And again, 
the cell segment has been created from the DAPI, as you can see. And, and from there, the third and final step is uh, using this, um, this uh, multiplex phenotyping app that was created. And while it's running, I can discuss kind of more of the interface. And so this is the results. This is, um, this is kind of going through um, the counts and everything that has been um, put into the app as a variable. So that tumor stroma is helping us bin out um, the numbers and the phenotyping from each area. Um, and um, that's, you know, that's why we're doing that. Uh, and then the, um, the app will then, um, once, we, once this populates with the um, multiplexing phenotyping app, it'll look like fruity pebbles. Each, as you see here, um, each runs pretty fast. Each image um, uh, will have, each image will have different colored um, phenotyping markers. You can actually come here and and highlight a marker, right, a nuclei with, and it'll tell you what phenotype. So this specific one is CD8 positive and FOXP3 positive. Um, we can go to another one. Now that's that's saying it's CD8. This white, yellowish white, is your cytokeratin tumor marker, and, and so on and so forth. You can go through this whole thing, and then this eye also can help you visualize what's going on. Um, you can turn it off or turn it on, and it'll um, you can you can zoom down to a, a specific nuclei and see if um, if that phenotyping is correct or not. So the next step from here is to gather all the data. Um, VisiFarm does a nice job of of allowing you to to access um, plots. Um, for instance, you come to this plot data. Um, tab and you can um, you can access um, phenotype matrix your phenotype profile scatter plots your Tisney plot I'm going to show you those right now um, so here's your phenotype matrix now your phenotype matrix is the rows let's zoom in here the rows represent um, the rows represent uh, the phenotype and the columns represent the bands. The next is your phenotype profile. Now that's just um, a distribution of your phenotypes and you, the different, um, so obviously the darker, the, the more um, prevalent the um, marker is. So CD8 obviously is, is quite prevalent. Next, I'm going to show you the Tisney plots. Now, the Tisney plots, there's one Tisney plot representing for every phenotype, and they are heat, heat map plots that are used for spotting similarities between phenotypes. So let's look at FOXP3, which kind of gives you a representation of where FOXP3 is the strongest. We can look at another one. Let's look at cytokeratin. Cytokeratin is obviously going to be prevalent in many areas, as that's our tumor marker. So the next, there's more data that you can um, that you can um, gather, and that's from um, so once so within the app variables were created as I discussed earlier and you can grab those variables um, by simply um, doing this Excel view and then you can export it into a uh, Excel file where there's going to be your counts and all everything that was created in your app. To even go further than that where you want to see the individual um, data for every single cell that's on that image we can actually export the data file or the, the data set. And that's a simple process where you export data file right there. I'm going to create, uh, let's just create test. 
and I'm going to put it on my desktop, save it. And we can visualize that right here. And you can see, um, you can see, you can also create this into an Excel file. So you can see that um, every every line of data has been represented. Every cell has is represented um, on this on this data sheet. Um, this is you know you can use R scripts to consolidate this this file for um, for more analysis for a deeper look into the analysis. And that that is about it. Thank you.